five to our. Oh wait. <laughs> is that is that how we do it? I don't know. I don't know what we're doing anymore. I swear we're losing our minds. <laughs> Hi, Nafisa! Oh my god, it's been so long. I miss seeing your face every day. I know, I know. How you been? My god, it's been forever. Yeah, just surviving, making it through. How about you? I'm probably gonna roll out of quarantine at this rate because baking, <laughs> cooking, eating has been off the charts. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I know. It's all I do. It's the only way to fill the time. Honestly. It really is. But it's also really funny how the entire world is doing the exact same thing right now. Everybody's making sourdough bread, I swear to God. Here they come. Beps. They're shaping Beps now. Alright guys, welcome to another episode of Desium Debunks, where we take all skincare and cosmetic industry related myths and we bust them out for you and we try to serve you with as much detailed and accurate information as possible. With a serving of tea, of course. We don't do it any other ways. Isn't that right, Kimmy? Of course, gotta stay hydrated. I love your Desium sign behind you. It's so colorful. I'm appreciating my sign. I love yours. It's so Desium. Thank you. My mom and dad made it. I'm at home and they helped me. They're helping me with my work. <laughs> Shout out to Kathy and Rob. <laughs> what is with that? So I think what people are trying to get at is hand sanitizers, like they're killing a lot of stuff on your skin. That's the point of them. Relentless enemy of germs. They're supposed to be killing all the bacteria, all the viruses, all those microorganisms, making sure like that 99% threshold that most of them claim uh, that they're hitting that, make sure they're clean, sometimes used as like an alternative to washing your hands. But when you're removing all of that stuff, is it leaving your skin vulnerable to new viruses that are being introduced afterwards? Is it uh, drying out your skin and making it crack and making it more vulnerable for things to penetrate. I think that's really the concern that people have. So I guess it is, it's a valid concern to have, but as far as the statement itself, I don't know about you, but I think it's completely factually incorrect. Um, it doesn't make you more susceptible to skin infections. I think it, it just, it, it disrupts your skin barrier as you overuse it. So it's not the actual topical application of it that actually makes your skin more susceptible. It's the overuse and the result of the overuse that will make your skin more susceptible because essentially what you're doing is you're over drying your skin. So your barrier uh, is completely disrupted and it's not able to function its normal function. So if your skin is cut or broken, germs may enter your body and cause an infection. So it's just important to make sure that you're moisturizing afterwards, like letting the hand sanitizer dry and then adding that hand, that hand cream or moisturizer on to make sure that your barrier is still fully functioning, pretty much. Speaking of moisturizers, you know which one that I've been loving? Oh, uh, which one? Is this a product placement? Do you want some? Yes, give it to me. All right, go for it. Oh, thank you. No worries. Put some on right now. Do it. Honestly, it's been so good. You never really know how clean your hands actually are. So if you're constantly touching your face, then you could potentially make yourself more susceptible to giving entry to those harmful bacteria that are on your hands and letting them sort of affect your skin microbiome. But I think the important thing for people to understand here is that your skin is, I've said this before in another um, episode, your skin is hella robust. And I think you need, we need to give it credit for what it naturally does, right? We have our own natural skin microbiome living on, on the surface of our skin. And they do their own um, protection mechanism by us, um, protecting us from the harmful bacteria um, from entering into our body, one of the main uh, barrier functions of the skin. So I think the main distinguishing factor is constant touching of the face may make you more susceptible to skin breakouts, but I don't think there's a definitive or a causal link between the two. It's always important to remember that when it comes to like breakouts and acne, there's no just one cause. There's so many things that go into it. Like you have hormones, you have your age, you have like genetics, all of this stuff and like your, your oil production. So 
Yes, maybe like introducing bacteria or if you have dirt on your hands that could get into your pores, but that's just one of the many factors that can lead to a breakout. Even like sometimes nowadays, like if I'm sitting like this, like maybe a couple days later, I'll notice some breakouts there, but I know it's not just because my hands are dirty and I'm touching them all the time. There's other things that are going into because I, I still have acne prone skin. Hey, remind you of anybody's face? <laughs> That's cruel. It's always like that with, with science, isn't it? There's no like, this plus this will definitely give you that. That makes me, literally. <laughs> Nobody can make that guarantee. I Nobody can make those kinds of promises. Thank like, you. No, no way. Uh, I can see why people think that. They're like, you know what? I'm gonna wash my face in the morning and as soon as I feel it being dirty again, I'm gonna wash it immediately again. And then again, and then again. Removing all of the bad things, all the dirt, all the grime off your face. We have to do all these things to make you good and clean. But you're also removing all the good stuff too. The microorganisms that are on your face, like protecting your skin, like that top layer of skin as you're like washing, if you're washing really vigorously and like exfoliating, you're just removing more layers of your skin. And like, you really don't need to be doing that. I never wanted to be different and dirty. Your sebum that is naturally produced by your skin and that lubricates your skin essentially, it has its own um, reasons for being there. So the more you frequently wash, the more you're stripping your skin of that, which also contributes to skin hydration. So you're sort of causing more <laughs> problems as you frequently wash. So if you wash twice a day, that's great. If you wash six times a day, I have questions for you. What are you trying to achieve? And like another thing to take into consideration is also the type of cleanser that you're using if you are frequently washing your face, right? If you're using a cleanser that is full of harsh ingredients and um, those ingredients are really great at stripping um, dirt or stripping facial impurities, I mean, they will get you to the point of where your skin will literally feel like a shriveled up raisin. And you don't want that because in order to get back to normal, it will take time, longer than usual if anything. Pause. Okay, my phone stopped recording. I think I might have run out of space. Hey, Kimmy. Yo, what's up? So here's another word for you that's uh, sort of buzzing around. What is it? Pseudoscience. Pseudoscience? Yes. Essentially, pseudoscience is like concepts or myths uh, that have not been scientifically uh, accurate or have not been backed by scientific knowledge, right? Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Like, when you think pseudoscience, you think kind of sketchy. It's usually, I would find pseudoscience linked to unsubstantiable, like unsubstantiated claims, like ridiculous claims um, that people just kind of throw out there. And it makes you question like, how did you, did you test for that? Is that just, something you came up with? Like, where's where's the hard evidence behind that? So that's what I find pseudoscience to mean. So essentially it's like conspiracy theories within science. Yes, exactly. Like somebody puts it on the internet and they're like, this is gonna cure all of your acne, blah, 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 blah. And then everybody's like, whoa. And they just take that one thing and there's, there's no evidence for it. There's nothing backing it up. They just throw it out there. So I think the best way or the best advice that I could give to anyone who wants to fact check pseudoscience is um, take a look at the source that you're trying to get information from, right? See if they're a reputable source. See if um, they are sources that are, have been mentioned in other articles or have been mentioned by other scientists out there. It's just, yeah, the best, the best place to start is to really look at the source. <laughs> I think it's untrue. I just think people just need to remember that there's a, a lot of fact. Wait, what are we talking about again? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> you know, relevant with everything that's going on in the world is stress and anxiety and how that can in fact impact our skin, you know, leading to either more breakouts or maybe in your case, like the dryness, me, I'm having all these acne breakouts and stuff. I used to have them both. First of all, it's a super interesting topic because um, you usually when you think about stress, you just associate it with, you know, mental 
health or um, physical health, but no one really seems to take into consideration the skin. But it does actually play um, a contributing factor to, to the state of the skin. So similar to how stress can affect your mental state and it can affect your physical body health, it can also affect your skin health. For example, if you're feeling really stressed, you become a, little, a lot more agitated, you become less patient, you become, you know, um, more prone to being angry um, more than usual. Similar thing to the skin. So you have your uh, natural skin components, shall I say, that um, sort of come into play when it comes to like stressful conditions within the skin. And they try to work as best as they can to in order to mitigate the stress. But however, if it's constant stress and it's um, chronic, then you'll start to see a lot of changes within the skin. Stress, anxiety, all of that, it impacts our life in so many different ways and the skin is no exception to it. Drink your tea. It calms me down. Cheers, girl. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Over here. <laughs> well, it's nearly time for your next class, so I must stop talking. But there's one more thing that I'd like to say. Thanks, guys, for joining us for this very special and kind of strange, kind of out there episode of Decium Debunks. Uh, this has been such fun. Oh my god, what am I saying? Oh. Let me try that again. That didn't make any sense. <laughs> Thanks guys so much for joining us for this very special episode of Decium Debunks Quarantine Edition. Uh, it's definitely a strange time out there. We hope everybody is staying safe and, you know, keeping in touch with friends and family. Do continue staying curious about science. Do please include all of your thoughts, curious ideas, or um, anything concerning in relation to cosmetics or skincare down below. But um, I can't wait till the next episode. Yes, I'm so excited. Hopefully we'll be in the office and we can see each other.